One of the most common concerns that brings people in to see me are actually the nasolabial folds. That is the folds that go from the corner of the nose to the corner of the mouth. In many cases, the nasolabial folds can be a natural part of the face and are simply the gradient between high cheeks and the upper lip. They can also be a result of aging as the cheeks descend downwards and inwards and fold over across the upper lip area. And when I first started in cosmetic medicine, I reckon I was running a nasolabial filling factory because everyone would come in for that concern and would listen to their concerns and address them with dermal fillers. So why are nasolabial folds such a big concern for so many people out there? Well, we look at ourselves in two dimensions only, whether that be in a mirror or in a photo. And when we look at ourselves in two dimensions, we have a flat image of ourselves. We don't focus on shape and contour. So what we focus on are the folds and the wrinkles or the lines. And the nasolabial folds happen to be one of the major folds in the face and the major areas of shadowing, and they happen to occur in the central part of the face. So naturally, our attention is drawn to them. But more importantly, filling lines and folds, although that may make the patient feel better, doesn't necessarily give you any wow effect. Where you do get wow is where you change someone's facial shape or the contours of their face. Aesthetically, there's not a huge reason to fill nasolabial folds. And really to make matters worse, the nasolabial folds are one of the most dangerous areas to fill in the face. The reason for this is that the facial artery runs right up this area, comes up from the jawline, past the corner of the mouth, through nasolabial fold. Injection of dermal filler into an artery is potentially disastrous. So when filling the nasolabial fold, we are essentially in facial artery territory. And there are so many variations in facial and artery anatomy. It can be medial or lateral to the nasolabial fold or run underneath it. We don't know. An injection of dermal fillers into the facial artery or its branches can potentially obstruct oxygenated blood supply to the skin or even travel further up to the blood supply of the retina of the eye and cause blindness. Combining the fact that it's the most requested area to fill with the fact that it lies within the facial artery territory, to me makes it the most dangerous area in the face to fill. It's a seemingly easy area to fill, highly requested by patients, right in a zone where you've got a major facial artery. And to make matters worse, it's actually the first area that is often taught to new practitioners when injecting the face with dermal filler. Crazy. And here comes more irony. When they give you a packet of filler, they give you this tool, which is a tiny, tiny 30 gauge needle. So what they're suggesting is that you take this short, sharp needle and inject multiple spots on the nasal labial folds where you inject boluses, which means big blobs of filler gives you multiple opportunities to enter into an arterial system. So basically, we are making new practitioners and any practitioner who injects nasolabial folds using this method sitting ducks for facial artery occlusion. The diameter of arteries in, this, in the facial region is tiny and it only takes an extremely small amount of filler to fill up the arteries and occlude them. So the bolus technique of injecting means that if you are in an artery, it's highly likely that you will inject enough in your bolus injection to cause an occlusion which could run further up, including up into the eye. So with enough pressure on the syringe and enough volume injected, you can potentially get filling of the facial artery, not just at the point you're injecting, but through its branches, including the blood supply to a much wider area or even going up to the eye from this region down here. So you would be a very, very unhappy patient if you didn't really need this area filled in the first place and you ended up with a major arterial complication as a result of filling it. Although it's still the most commonly requested area to fill in the face, 
I now try to guide my patients and educate them and show them that there are other areas that we can fill that may be more beneficial to their face. It's actually very unusual that we need to fill um, a nasolabial fold. There are, however, some true indications to fill nasolabial folds. And this may be where the nose needs more projection. There is um, some deficiency or some flattening of what you call the piriform fossa, which, that, which is that hollowing at the top of the nasolabial fold. If we are to fill nasolabial folds, or for that matter, any area where there are potentially the risks of intra-arterial injection, we have to take several precautions to minimize any risk that may occur. And I think one of the main things for me is to use a cannula rather than a blunt needle. So a cannula is a blunt tipped instrument, like a needle, but, but it has a rounded blunt tip. And that means it's going to be way less likely to penetrate the wall of an artery and allow filler to be injected in the artery. Needles slice and dice so that you can cut through the wall of an artery, get into it very easily, and then inject into the artery if you're in it. The second thing is you should really be injecting very, very slowly extremely slowly in any area where there's a potential for intra-arterial injection. So if you are unfortunate enough to get into the artery, then as you inject, if you're injecting slowly, it is likely that the patient will experience some pain if you're in the artery, or possibly you'll see the beginnings of problems such as uh, you'll see some blanching or whitening of the skin um, as the blood supply drops off and you'll be able to withdraw and stop your injection straight away before matters get worse and say for example you've injected a whole heap of filler and it's traversed right up the arterial system. The other rule I use is although we cannot be definite of the facial artery anatomy and where it lies precisely we do know that it does run up the face such like so. So we can inject perpendicular to the direction of the artery. So if you are injecting perpendicular to an artery, it's going to be way harder to get into that artery and keep the filler in that artery, much more likely with a parallel injection. And as practitioners, we should also have always an emergency backup plan. Um, so for example, if the filler is injected into an artery and you notice the signs of vascular occlusion, then you have a reversal agent at hand to inject into that area immediately and reverse the potential problem. This product is called Hyaluronidase. It's the enzyme which reverses and breaks down dermal fillers. So when I think back about it, having filled many a nasolabial fold, using inappropriate techniques, using needles. Over many years, I'm really thankful that nothing happened and I was very lucky to get away with never having a complication in this area. So the risk is rare, but because the complication is such a disastrous one, I believe we should take every precaution we can to avoid this problem. So I hope this video has given you some insight into the filling of this popular area and Maybe armed with this information, you can make a better decision about what you want to do when it comes to this area for you.